So this video is going to be pretty ranty and I don't really have a particular structure to it. I don't have any visuals either because, well, I've just been so busy with working that that I haven't really had time to sit down and make a script and make a proper video like I normally do like every couple days. Um, yeah, it's just uh, so much stuff has just been not really happening with the game, but just, you know, I've just been feeling a lot of stuff for the game that um, I haven't really felt in a while and it's not positive, it's not positive feelings, it's more like resentment and boredom and just disinterest, like these are all the sort of things I've been feeling where just it's, I've like this is my, this is legit like my lowest point in this game. Um, I have just never been so uninterested and so detached and so dissatisfied with how the game's functioned and ran um, in a while. And I think I'm going to boil that down to like six different reasons why, for me personally, and again, obviously this is all goes without saying, this is all very personal, this is all my personal opinion, so I absolutely do not expect you to agree with me, so I'm just telling you how I've been thinking, okay? Now, let's just start with the first point, okay, game design. Um, I think that the game design is just bad. I think the game design is poor. I don't think the game design is good. Uh, and I think that's the problem. And the problem is, is Metadex. And I know so many of you are either going to jump on that and be like, oh my god, yes, you're so right. Or, oh my god, you're such a fucking scrub. I think I'm the only person who thinks this way, and I've never explained this per uh, properly before. But Metadex have, are, are just, have just been terrible. Now... Hang on a second and let me explain that. You see, I understand that there will always be a meta. I don't have a problem with the fact there will always be a meta because like, it doesn't matter what you do to the game, there will always be a meta deck, whether you like it or not. So if we ban Spyro right now, which are undoubtedly like tier zero, and they're only going to get stronger, by the way, unless they hit, hit them because of things like Trigate Wizard or whatever it's called that's coming out. Like the, the deck, this deck isn't even full power yet, okay? Freeze has got a, another form, okay? Trust me, there's another form coming, right? That's basically what Spiral is, right? There's, this isn't even its final form, right? Not even using, like, 80% of its full fucking potential power or whatever, right? Uh, <laughs> oh, so, the point is, it's like, as I was saying, so I understand that if we ban Spiral, the Pendulum Magician becomes the best. Deck. Okay, now we're in a tier zero Pendulum Magician form. Let's ban Pendulum Magician. Okay, great. Now, Draco is the best deck. Oh, cool. Now we're in a tier zero Draco format. Okay, let's ban Draco. Oh, what's the best? All oh, right, ABC is now the best. Okay, great. Now we need to ban ABC. All right. Oh, oh, cool. Frogs are the best deck, right? Sweet. All right, let's ban frogs. They're too powerful. Oh, great. Uh, fucking Glad Beasts are too powerful. All right. I under, like, do, do you understand what I'm saying? I don't actually think those decks would be tier zero. I'm just giving you an example. As soon as you hit a deck, the deck under it now becomes the best deck. And then the deck under that becomes the best deck if that gets hit, and so on and so forth. So to say that you hate meta is kind of a fallacy, right? Because there will always be a meta deck. My, my point is that I don't hate meta. It's that how much a meta deck does has just grown to the point of being unfair in recent years. Um, you see, when... The gap between decent rogue, like decently competitive rogue, and meta become too far. That's when the game becomes bad, in my opinion. I think the wider that gap is, the worse the game is. When, I I don't have a problem with there being a best deck because there, there will always be a best deck. But the, when when the best deck is so far gone, beyond like reachable in any form whatsoever by even just the deck below it. Think about that. The deck below it. Like, what is the next best choice after Spyro? It's probably Magicians, right? And Magicians didn't top Dallas. They are so far behind the best deck. Do you understand what I'm saying? If you imagine a race or a swimming pool contest race or whatever, right? When second, third, fourth, and fifth place have a difference of, a, of, let's say, 10 seconds between each other, okay? That's understandable. There's a, there's a, there's a, there's a winner. There's a clear winner, and there's a, well, not really a winner. There's a, there's a clear difference between the silver medalist 
and the bronze medalist, okay? This is a, you know, a, a couple, like, maybe a second apart or something if it's swimming or something, right? I, I don't know. Like, the point is, is, like, the gap, there's a gap, there's a recognizable gap, there's a sizable gap, but it's a gap that can be measured. Currently, and I think for the most part in recent years, the gap between deck two and deck one has just been so far and so wide that it's not, it's no longer fun. And not even like the gap between first and second, because, you know, sometimes we get formats where first and second are a lot closer, but then first and second are so far ahead of second and third. So I think that's kind of, I think if you, so if you keep that analogy in your head, I think that when the gap between first, second to third to fourth to fifth, I think when the gap between each one of those in an ideal world, I think the closer the gap is between those and the more consistent that gap is between those, the better the game. And recently, the, the the gaps have just been so fluctuative, have been so far apart, have been so up and down and close, and then far away again, and then it, it's it's just really, and it, it's just, it's just really frustrating. And I feel like the reason that I haven't properly, passionately, truly enjoyed the game as much as I have since twenty fourteen is because the gaps between the decks have been. It's too absurd. I don't mind meta decks. I don't. I I like meta decks. I don't hate them. Okay. I, earlier I said I hate meta decks. Like, okay. I obviously explained myself badly. I don't hate meta decks. I hate the fact that the gap between meta decks. Like, e like even just think about that word, meta decks. Okay. There's always going to be like a kind of like small group of best decks. I'm not. I'm not saying six samurai. Or super sorry, six samurai because they're probably good if you open gateway, right? I'm not saying super heavy samurai and ultra athletes and crystal beasts should have a fair gap between them and spiral. Like it's just not gonna happen. Okay, we I understand that, but the thing is, is that when you have the like when you have a best deck like magicians and that deck was really powerful. It it took so many spots at the UDS. When that when it was just that format, it took so many spots, right? And it it was so dominant. And then, a single event later, it takes zero. Think about that. Think about the absurdity of that. The same thing happened with Burning Abyss and Necros. Burning Abyss took, like, twenty spots, at like YCS Charleston, I think it was Charleston, and then, the very next YCS was like YCS Tacoma. It took zero. Or like one, like it. It took, like, literally, like, just an innumerable. Like, I, I, just, I can't even speak. It just took, like, nothing, and that's the gap of one event. No ban list. No new set. No, well, not obviously new set. No ban list. No emergency ban list. No like master rule change. No, none of that. It's just one new set relegated the the best deck the de facto best deck to useless to literally toilet paper and that pattern happens every ha, has been happening every set for years now and i've not been enjoying it because the deck because the gap it creates in the in, in the decks is just too too far and that's really just how i boil down why i just haven't enjoyed the game recently i think i've figured out after really thinking about it, why I just, I'm not enjoying the game anymore. And it's because the gap is too big. The gap between my little cool, fun, paleo rabbit deck that is decent, you know, at locals, maybe can top a regional. Um, it's just, the, the gap between that and the best deck is just absurd. Paleo was meta like 11 months ago. Paleo was the best deck potentially this year at some point. Like, Joshua Schmidt won a YCS during, like, sub format zoo. Sub fusion sub format zoo. Right? That deck was meta so recently. Nothing in the game has changed except that we've had just a couple sets. And the deck is toilet paper. The deck is toilet paper. And it's just. It's just really, really sad. Like I don't, I don't expect decks like 
black wings to keep up over the years. I don't expect decks like Super Heavy Samurai to keep up over it. That deck couldn't fucking keep up when it was around, like when it first came out, never mind years later, but that's not the point. Like, meta decks just don't keep up with the next meta deck. You know, if I want to like still play Magician, I, I should be able to just still play Magician, but I can't because what am I going to do in a field of 28 out of 32 top cut spots for one deck? What am I supposed to do? Like, literally cheat. Like, that's the only fucking option is, like, to just fucking cheat. Like, I, I don't get it. Like, what do you do in that situation? You either play that deck or you fucking cheat. Like, oh, uh, Okay, obviously, like, you know, Invoked got, like, a top or two. Uh, Dallas and stuff. Like, the point is, is like in tier zero, like what do you fucking do? Like you, you can't do anything. Like you pl like you join them or like die. Like you know, it's just absurd. Ah, uh, and I think the reason for why meta decks have just become so absurd in recent years, and I think the reason that the gap has become so absurd is because. There's just been so much of a, of a fixation on archetypes rather than cards. And that's one of the biggest reasons that I think the game has started to deteriorate. I think that when there's I think that when there's a healthy balance of defensive cards to engine cards to normal summons to extenders, I think when there's a when there's a healthy balance of that ratio, decks tend to be quite good. You know, when I think about like 2014 you know um unless you're playing something like sylvans or infernity or dragon rulers or like some kind of soul charge deck and that's like three decks already you're like okay so that's like the meta right no no, no. like that format like so much stuff was like viable and you could play like you know I, the, the way i see it right see if, if torrential tribute isn't relevant the format probably sucks like legit if you start taking traps out of your deck, the format probably sucks. The the, the power creep has just is, is just gone too far. This that's the reality of it. The, the power creep is too far. The power creep is too far. Think about this, right? Like, you're probably kind of fixated on the specifics and stuff like that, but I just want you to really just think about this conceptually, okay? The backbone of Yu-Gi-Oh is like trap cards. You think of all the memes and all this kind of shit that people talk about when they think about Yu-Gi-Oh! People who never even play Yu-Gi-Oh! They'll say things like, Aha, you activated my trap card. Like, yeah, aha, uh -huh, I did. Fuck you. Like, that's what that's what I do in this game. Like, I, I summon like a somewhat okay monster and then I set something. Come at me. Like, that's how I remember Yu-Gi-Oh! when I was growing up. What, what the fuck's Yu-Gi-Oh! now? Oh, I'll tribute fucking masterpiece for masterpiece <laughs> shit like that do you know what i mean like this is the fucking where this game's at and this deck is shit by the way this deck is shit think about that think about that in your head put that in your brain this deck sucks this deck that can summon an unaffected by fucking everything ever created is is shit this this card sucks right now imagine that imagine the situation that we're in that blessed the day that masterpiece becomes Un like becomes fucking toilet paper can you imagine arguably the most powerful fucking individual single card printed you know maybe not individual single card maybe like boss monster right probably like the most powerful boss monster ever printed it's shit it, sh it sucks it's not good that's how far the power creep's gone guys think about that it's, it's, it's absurd it's really absurd like Yu-Gi-Oh! is based around playing defensive cards. You need to play defensive cards to protect your deck. And I think the biggest problem, if I'm going to summarize it in a nutshell, if you take anything away from this video, if you, if you learn anything from it, if you remember anything I've said today, remember this. Okay, it's, the, it's this next sentence I'm about to say. The monsters in the recent archetypes have completely replaced trap cards. Yep, think about that. Just take that away with you today. Trap cards have been replaced by powerful, in-engine, searchable monster cards. Everything that the game 
was you know fun about about uh, about it anything that was like enjoyable about the game was it the interactive aspect the back and forth trying to like out top deck each other hold like holding your resources holding your traps saving your saving your uh your, your mst saving your bottomless this kind of like sort of chess mentality is what made this game fun for me that's what i enjoyed and nowadays you don't really have to think about playing around things you do obviously if you want to like do really well but you can just vomit a spiral hand onto a field and something will stick you know some something will stick because that's really just how it is and i'm not saying like oh meta decks are brainless and like, any idiot can play them nowadays and you only won because you bought your deck for more money and i'm not trying to say that kind of stuff because i hate that argument of course like it takes a lot it takes so much like planning and decision making to do a spiral combo obviously but because of just how powerful it is like Unless you've opened some absurd hand trap like Droll or, I don't know, Maxi, like, you just, just, you can play through anything, you know? You can just do anything and just hope it sticks and it will probably be uh, beat any deck that, it, that's the thing, it will be any deck that is in itself, for the most part. Like, you just brute force your way to a win with, with that deck, if outside the mirror, you know? It's really, like, the tragedy of it, honestly. It's just, like, I feel like the, the, the backbone of Yu-Gi-Oh, which is things like activating traps and protecting yourself and then poking slowly, trying to play around their trap cards, like, that's how I define the game. And it just doesn't... It just It's not like that anymore. It's really, really not like that anymore. When I... When, when my single turn takes eight minutes playing at full speed... Full speed with shortcuts, then it's the game's too far gone. The game is too far gone. Like, where's the where, where's the interactivity? Where's the back and forth card game? Where's the interactions with one another? <sighs> one day I'm gonna buy a magic deck or uh, take part in a draft or. I'll probably end up enjoying it like a million times more. <laughs> I still don't know anything about the game or the rules, but I heard that it's a lot more interactive than what what this game has been promoting now. It's a shame. It doesn't help that my locals is completely dead. You know, back in the day of Glasgow, apparently there used to be 40-man locals every week, week in, week out. 30, 40 people playing Yu-Gi-Oh! We have, like, winner boxes that don't get the attendance anymore. They have to cancel winner boxes because not enough people enter. Now, how does a community end up like that? How does a community... This is obviously extremely anecdotal because I'm one example. You guys, maybe this somewhere one of you have a million examples of how your locals has grown since, like, I don't know, the release of... Necros or the even a more recent set like Raging Tempest made your locals double in numbers. Like that's probably the case. Obviously, I'm not saying this is objective at all. I'm just saying for me personally, but in, in the space that I've been playing, the, my locals has collapsed. My locals has just straight up died. The most attendance I've seen at locals was 2014 format. The most I've seen people enjoy and play the game and just have fun. Honestly, it was 2014. Because obviously rose tinted goggles are on. I've only been playing that long, so maybe there were better formats before that. But in the however many years I've been around now, honestly, can't think of anything more fun than twenty fourteen. And the game just felt like I was interacting with my opponent more. And yes, I understand that Lone Fire Soul Charge isn't very much uh, interaction. <laughs> but the thing is, like, I don't know. You take you take a deck like even for its time, like. Sylvans, like what? What do they end with, really? Like they don't end with like things that stop you from playing. Like at best, they're gonna get one negate with Felgrand. Like one negate. Like what? What else did that deck do? It put up like lots of powerful monsters and stuff, but those monsters didn't 
play on your turn like they do now, you know? If I was to do anything in this game, and this is something else that you should take away from this video, um, if I was to change or ban or like do anything to the game, if you like just think of it this way, um, I, I think that I would uh, ban spell speed to monster effects. I think every single monster that does something in your opponent's turn, it needs to go. I think it's too strong, I think it's too powerful. Um, and it's really just the sort of formula that the game design has taken in recent years. Everything, everything can just play, like I can, I can, there's some decks that rely on your opponent's turn, you know? Obviously Spyro isn't one, I'm, I'm sure there's something I can think of, right? But like too much is happening during your opponent's turn. I feel like during your opponent's turn, the best thing, the absolute best thing that you should be able to do is like flip Torrential Tribute. I think that's the most interaction that you should have on your opponent's turn. And because, you know, I, a lot of people think, oh, flipping trap cards, that's so helmet, that's so, like, like bad, and that's not fun because it basically just becomes, like, pseudo-floodgating each other. Like, I can understand the argument for that, but what's the alternative? What's the alternative? Like, just don't think of trap cards as purple things that you put in your back row. Think of trap cards as disrupting your opponent during their turn. What's the difference? What's the difference between setting five and summoning a spiral board? I'm still playing on your turn. I'm still popping two of your cards and bouncing two of your cards and spinning one of your cards with a searched trap card. Like, what's the difference? What's the difference? I'm still Dryden popping your guy. I'm still flipping Solemn Strike. I'm still flipping D-Barrier. Oh wait, those are traps. <laughs> I mean, that deck was good because of like how small the engine was. Like, But, you know, the, the point is, it's like, too much is just happening on your opponent's turn. And I think that once that formula goes away, I think we, we, we get like a fun game, like, you know, BLS, like banish a cards and pass, like that's strong. Why, why can't that be like the fucking peak at pinnacle of this game? I don't know. <sighs> Try to like see if I've missed anything else. Don't really think so, I've kind of covered it. So really to summarize and thinking about it, um, I guess if the main arguments, the main things to take away, well, not enjoying the game because I think that over the years, um, archetypes rather than individual cards have become too broken. I'd like Konami to make more broken cards rather than broken archetypes. I'd like to see more cards like Mathematician, like Firehand, like Soul Charge. I'd like to see more cards like the, like this made because I feel like maybe that'll help a lot of various decks compete. And I think, you know, even with cards like that, um, there's always going to be like a best deck. Like obviously, Soul Charge does more for Infernity than it does for an Evil Swarm, but it's not like Evil Swarm couldn't compete in 2014. It could, like, really to an extent. It did, like, get a top, at, like, or two at big events, you know. And that's fucking Evil Swarm. That deck sucks, right? Like the point I'm trying to make is that I don't think varied formats need to be like 50 decks, but it would feel nice to at least, you know think to yourself, well, you know, if I get somewhat lucky, I can I can beat the best deck. You know, if I side strat if if I if I come up with some really, really intelligent sort of like main deck meta calls, if I if I can like really build my deck to um you know have a have a have like a, a really cool unique siding strategy, then I then I can I can maybe take on like this like mythic ruler deck or this infernity deck. You know? If I can like come up with like this little like small genius tactic for something like freaking fire fist artifact and like curry bandit artifact trap tricks and all these like like Madoch hands like there was just so many like just little changes that you could make to a deck and suddenly it became like a little bit better and then you could like get a bit lucky and you would do okay and you know you'd at least like feel like you you had a fighting chance the the game played to turn 10 when was the time when was the last time we had a turn 10 when was the last time we had a turn 10 you can literally just put both players hands on the table and you would know who would win by turn three this is the problem like games don't last long anymore they last long they last chrono like in terms of time they last long in terms of turns they don't last long at all 
because we're spending eight minutes doing a combo instead of playing with our opponent. We're spending 10 minutes looking at our hand and checking our deck and searching for a card and fucking all this dumb stuff. Ah, oh, it's, it's just so frustrating. It really is just so frustrating. Those were the days like when you make like, you're, when, when you're making like three steps and setting like a card or two and that's it, like doesn't matter anymore it's not it's not how it works full speed combo with shortcuts takes like eight to ten minutes what kind of games that really well where, where's the fun in that where's the interaction it's a duel it's not fucking solitaire these games are for two players but yeah i did my uh, i did my summary and conclusion about like 10 minutes ago and i've still been speaking <laughs> so yeah um tldr <sighs> um, I think that too much happens on your opponent's turn. I think the gap between meta and even just somewhat, maybe slightly meta deck is too is too wide. And I think that's really it. Honestly, it's the two main points of this video. You know, from this like rambling rant. If you take anything away. My main issues that I've had with the game and why I honestly have just been falling so out of love with it is just, number one, the gap between somewhat competent meta and best deck is too high, is too wide. And the fact that you don't do anything on your... The, the fact that your archetype does so much on your opponent's turn. It's, it's, it's amazing because I like interactivity, but ironically and paradoxically... By interacting so much on your opponent's turn, that in itself removes interactivity. Do you know? What I, do you know what I mean? It's 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 really weird. Like it's it's almost this weird like conundrum. I don't know, but yeah, those are the main two points, guys. Um, I should honestly sign off before this hits thirty minutes because that's really fucking absurd. So if you've watched this far, hashtag Blade Step wins the duel. So yep, yeah. hashtag Blade Step wins the duel. If you've watched this far. Honestly, let me know what you think and try not argue with me too much because I'm not really looking to argue. I'm just, like I said, this is just my opinion that I don't really, like, I'm not saying is, you know, correct or like 100%. It's just because it's a rant. I'm going to I'm gonna say things that I probably won't even agree with a week from now. I say things that I'm probably not going to um, even agree with tomorrow. You know, obviously rants are very emotionally driven and I've just I've just been feeling so emotionally disinterested, so out of love with the game and just so um aggravated by like where the like the direction and the game design. So hashtag blades that wins the duel in the comment section. Let me know what you think down below. Um honestly, if you if you've personally not been enjoying the game recently. I'd like to know what your reasoning is, and if you have been enjoying the game, can like on the on the flip, I I'm curious to know like what is it about the game recently that you've enjoyed, you know, because honestly I feel like if I was to do a survey, I feel like most people would say that the best like time that the most fun they've had in the game was sometime in 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 the past, and I suppose that's just how nostalgia works, obviously. But I feel like a lot of people and many people would not really say for the last like you know two years that there was a point in time where they were like oh yeah the the Yu -Gi -Oh is fantastic right this is great I, this is amazing I, i'm i love i'm having so much fun but if you have i want to know genuinely i'm just curious like what your reasoning is and how you feel and stuff about that stuff so hashtag see you later bye